this fire scene. Mm -hmm. Sorry, you're good. All right, let's open up to page 203. Um, yesterday, we were taking a look at how we can find the derivative of implicit equations. That's when we have kind of x's and y's mixed throughout. Okay, it's not really y equals like we're used to seeing. Um, so I believe we were working on this top right hand example when the bell rang, when the bell rang, and we're going to take a look at some more examples today and some like kind of deeper thinking type questions, maybe even a free response type question. So today's going to be a good day. Um, let's just go ahead and practice. I know we started it, but let's just go ahead and see how much we can do uh, from memory from yesterday. So we're going to work our way across an equation, okay, one term at a time. And let's just start with the first one, the derivative of 2x. 2, good. Next we have to add the derivative of e to a power. What's our shortcut for e to a power? Yeah. Uh, e to that power times the derivative of that power, which would be dy over dx. There we go. All right, so the derivative of y is technically 1, just like the derivative of x is 1. But any time you take the derivative of a y variable, you need that dy over dx derivative symbol. All right, so, so far so good. Let's keep working our, our way across the equation. The derivative of x squared, 2x minus the derivative of y squared. 2y. 2y. Dy, dy over dx. Perfect. Okay. Um, so that's a very good first derivative line, but we're going to try to clean it up. Our goal is to eventually get dy over dx, okay, one derivative symbol equal to something. So we're going to use some algebra, move some terms around, some different techniques to help us eventually get here. How do you want to do that? We're going to have to be a little tricky because we have two of those derivative symbols in our uh, lines so far, but somehow we only want one in the end. What's our little like math magic step to turn two or three or four things into one thing? Yeah. You can move the two over to the right and the negative two y over to the left. Okay, we're going to do a little switcheroo. Our goal, let's not lose sight of it, is to get dy over dx all by itself. So we're going to get all of those terms on one side, okay, all the derivative terms on one side, and then everything else on the other. We're kind of going to separate these different now, terms. When I say mm -hmm. uh, negative 2y on the left, I meant on the right and move the e to the right and the x to the left. So it would be 2 minus 2x. So you switch, you yeah. switch those two. Okay, so I think that's what we did yesterday. We're going to move this one over here. It doesn't matter how you move them. If you want to get all the derivatives on the right, go for it. If you want to get all the derivatives on the left, go for it. doesn't matter. you just got to separate them somehow. So Dan chose this way. So we'd have 2 minus 2x, two because we're moving that over here, equals minus e to the y, dy over dx, because we're moving it to the other side minus 2y dy to the d over dx. All right, so all the derivatives on one side, everything else on the other. It doesn't matter how you switcheroo it, okay? On the right-hand side, if both of these have a dy over dx in common, what can we do with that derivative term or notation or symbol? Yeah? You can rewrite it in the front and have parentheses uh, ey, well, ey plus, yeah. I would also take the negative out. You would want to take a negative out too. It's okay if you don't. Okay, so we can factor a dy over dx derivative symbol out. Okay, that's what they have in common. So that's kind of our math magic step. Okay, we're going to use factoring, GCF factoring specifically, to go from two derivatives in this case down to one. So what can we do now to get dy over dx all by itself? Divide that over, all right? So we have 2 minus 2x over negative e to the y minus 2y. 
Now, if you wanted to, you could do some other things. Dan mentioned how you could factor out a negative if you wanted to. Okay, so if you're going through some of the homework problems or examples and you're checking your work with someone else's just to see how you did, it's okay if yours are a little off, okay? It just might mean that you move the derivatives to one side, whereas the other person moved them to the other, okay? They should be very similar. They just might look a little different depending on how you moved your terms, okay? But it still should work out in the end as long as your math was correct, okay? Let's go ahead and try some more today. So we're gonna take a look at the two at the bottom. All right, take a look at the next one. Notice how it's implicit, okay? X's and Y's are mixed through. How do you feel like taking the derivative of the first term on the left? Think about your shortcuts. What do you notice, Dan? You have to use the product. Why? because technically you can separate that out by 2x times y. Okay, so this is a multiplication. We have the 2x term times a y term. So we're going to have to go through product rule for our shortcut. So we all have 1 and then d2, the derivative of y. What do you want to write? dy over dx. Okay, so 1d2 plus 2 and then d1, the derivative of 2x. We just have 2. Okay, so we're done with the derivative on the left hand side. We'll go ahead and move over, working our way across. The derivative of 3y squared. There we go, 6y dy over dx plus the derivative of the next term, the derivative of 2x is just 2. Wonderful first derivative. Okay, first line. Our goal is to get dy over dx equals something. So we're going to, have to use some algebra, moving things around to help us get that. Okay, we have multiple derivatives. We're going to get all those on one side, everything else on the other. I don't care how you move them, as long as you move them correctly. Do we want to get the derivatives on the left or the right? Do you have a preference? How do you want to move some things? You want to do the left side? Okay, so if we want to get all the derivatives on the left, we're going to have to move the 6y derivative to the left which means we'll move the 2y to the right. Everything with a derivative symbol to the left, anything without one to the right. So we'll have 2x dy over dx plus 6y dy over dx, sorry, minus, okay, equals 2 minus 2y. Now that everything's separated, we can factor out that dy over dx derivative symbol. So we're left with 2x minus 6y. And the last thing to get the derivative all by itself? Division, yep. So 2 minus 2y over 2x minus 6y. Okay. Again, you could leave it like that. Since we're working with a fraction, maybe you could take things a little bit more. Notice how all the coefficients are divisible by 2, right? So if you wanted to factor out a 2 from the top, factor out a 2 from the bottom, they would eventually cancel. You'd be left with 1 minus y over x minus 3y, okay, if you simplified it further. I'm not saying you have to do that. I'm just saying it might not be bad to at least recognize it because if this was a multiple choice question, who knows, maybe the simplified version was one of your possibilities and not this first one. Okay, so just be aware that you can take some things further if you wanted to. Are we doing okay? Let's try another one, okay? Working our way across. Derivative of 5x to the third. 
we got 15x squared. Derivative of 3. 0. Good. Derivative of 2y. 2 dy over dx, yep. All right, then we have to subtract the derivative of 3x squared times y. What do you want to do for that derivative? Product, okay, so when you take a look at this last term here, you are technically multiplying two things together you have the 3x squared term and then the y term. Okay, so we're going to, have to subtract a product rule. We need 1d2 plus 2d1. So 3x squared is our first term. d2, we need the derivative of y, which would be dy over dx, plus 2, which would just be y, times d1, derivative of 3x squared, we got 6x. Okay, now maybe before we start to move things around, we'll get rid of those brackets or whatever grouping symbol you used. Okay, we are subtracting the derivative of this last term, but notice how the derivative are, are results in multiple terms. So we're going to have to do a distribution there to take that into account. So minus 6xy looks like the last term. So all the parentheses are gone. We got to get all derivatives on one side, everything else on the other. Does it matter how we move them? No, you just got to be consistent. Do you guys notice how the both derivatives are already on the right hand side? All right, so maybe we can just move the 6xy from the right to the left. So it ended up being adding on the other side. So everything's separated. We can factor out a dy over dx. That's our little magic step there. So then to get the derivative all by itself, we'll do some division. I don't think we can take that one any further because even the, did I miss something, Dan? I might have missed something, actually. Okay. Yeah, I did. You did? Okay. I missed the two somewhere. Gotcha. I don't think we can take it any further. Even though 15, 6, and 3 are all divisible by 3, the 2 is not. So you can't simplify anything there. And even though these top two terms have an x in common, um, the bottom two terms do not have an x in common, so you can't factor any or cancel anything out there either. Yeah? You could still just have a top and back and forth, right? Yes, if you wanted to pull out a 3 and an x, you could do that. Yeah, so it would be 3x plus 2y. Yeah, if you wanted to write it like that, that's fine. Oh, you can't see that. Yeah, another way to write it. How are we doing from yesterday? We didn't lose it, did we? No? All right. Let's take a look at a few more examples of these implicits, but we're going to bring in some of those concepts um, that we saw from the circle kind of example yesterday. We were looking at horizontal tangents and vertical tangents in terms of our slope of the tangent line. So let's check uh, this one out. For what values of x will that curve have a horizontal tangent? Okay, when, that, when you see that phrase, horizontal tangent, what do you think of? Horizontal. Zero slope. All right, so dy over dx. Up to this point, we said f prime equals zero, right? 
But notice how this is an implicit equation. X's and Y's are mixed in. So instead of using F prime, we're going to use dy over dx. Okay, it's still a derivative symbol. It's just a different way of representing the derivative. Okay, so let's think about this. dy over dx is a fraction, right? And we want a fraction to equal zero. What part of that fraction is zero? The top, okay? So if we want the derivative to be zero, we specifically want the top or the dy, the change in y values, to be zero. Okay, little little note there that might be worth writing. Okay, show your work and explain your thinking, whatever you want to do. All right, so let's go ahead and tackle the derivative because we know we eventually want to set it equal to zero, probably more specifically the top equal to zero if we have a fraction. Okay, so we're going to work our way through. Derivative of x cubed. We got 3x squared. Derivative of y cubed. 3y squared, dy over dx. Good? All right, moving on to the next term. Derivative of 4x times y. Yeah. Um, 4x dy over dx. Okay. Plus 4y. All right, you're going to have to use your product rule. 4x is your first term and y is your second. We need 1d2 plus 2 d1. Checks out there. Then we have to add the derivative of 1, which is just 0, so don't even bother writing it. Okay? There's a wonderful first derivative. We're going to clean it up, do a little switcheroo, get all the derivatives on one side, everything else on the other. I think most of us might prefer moving the derivatives to the left-hand side. Is that a true assumption? Maybe? So 3y squared dy over dx minus 4x dy over dx plus 4y minus 3x squared. We can factor out a dy over dx. And last but not least, do a little division we'll get our final derivative. Are we getting pretty quick with those? Okay, so now that we found the derivative, okay, the slope of a tangent line, we want to figure out where the tangent line's horizontal, aka a slope of zero. So we said that concept means a derivative is zero, and since our derivative is a fraction, we're more specifically interested in when the top of that fraction is zero, okay, where the changes in y's are zero. So in terms of your fraction here, okay, your derivative fraction, we're going to take just the top and set it equal to zero. All right, now do, you, do any of you see an issue with this? That equation we have, yeah. Well, you still got a y in there. We still have a y, okay? For what values of x? Okay, that's the main question here. For which values of x will this be true? And we have one equation with two variables in it. So it would be nice if we could get another equation somehow with the same two variables and maybe use a system. We've done that a few times this year. Or we're gonna utilize our calculator to help us out a little bit. So I'm going to ask you this. Between the two variables that we have here, which one do you uh, see, which one does it seem to be more easily solvable for? Do you think it's easier to get the y by itself or the x by itself? Probably the y. Probably the y. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. We'll go ahead and add the 3 over, or the 3x squared over, and then divide the 4. All right, so now that we know what y is, okay, in terms of x, because we still have an x left, how do you think, or how can we use this to help us figure out some values of x? Thank you. Okay. 
if y equals something, can we plug this something in for a y somewhere? For what values of x will this curve have a horizontal tangent? We're going to take this, okay, what y equals, and we're going to plug it in for those y's. Wouldn't we just be left with something with x's, right? Which means we can solve for it. All right, so it's going to look weird. We're going to have x cubed plus. Now, instead of y, we're going to plug in the 3x squared over 4. And we got to cube that equals 4x, and then instead of the other y, we're going to substitute in the 3x squared over 4 plus 1. All right, so this right here looks very complicated. We have powers of 3, we have fractions, but at least we have just x's left, okay? What we're going to do is utilize the calculator to help us figure out these x solutions. So if you really take a look at what this is stating, okay, we have this side equal to this one, okay? If two things are equal, what should we be looking for on a graph? Intersection. An intersection point, right? When two things are the same, they cross each other, okay, they intersect. So on your calculator, I want you to plot the left-hand side in Y1 plot the right-hand side in y2, and we're going to search for these intersection points. Okay, where are they exactly the same? All right, so if you have anything in your calculator, go ahead and clear it out. Before we hit graph, let's go ahead and hit window. They don't really give us an idea as to what a good window would be, but do you guys want to start off somewhere and then we can always change it if you want to. How about we try fives in every direction? Go ahead and hit graph. So there's the first one, and there's the second. All right, so if we take a look at the window we have here, it looks like we clearly intersect down here somewhere, all right? But notice how it looks like we might intersect somewhere else up here. We just can't see it, okay, because these two lines or curves are getting closer to each other. So we may have to do a little figuring out up there. Let's go ahead and try to find this one first, because at least that one's on the screen that we have now. Do we remember how to find inter an intersection on our calculator? Like what buttons to press? Second calc, or the trace button, yep, at the top of the, pa or top of the calculator. And it's option five for intersect. Now what do you do? Yep, you move your cursor to where you think the intersection is, and enter three times. All right, so the x value of the first intersection point looks like to be negative point seven six nine seven okay usually on the AP test they'll want you to round to three or four decimal places and um, rounding might not be the best word to use you can either round or you can truncate do you know the difference between the two so let's say our number was point seven nine eight seven 
if you rounded to three decimal places, that'd be 0.797, right? If you truncate to three decimal places, 0.798, you just kind of, or sorry, this would be nine, okay? Um, if you truncate, you just end it, okay? Whereas rounding, you would either keep it the same or move up a value. Okay, so you can do either one. You can round or truncate. I would normally do three or four decimal places just to be safe. Okay, so in terms of our first x value, we'll say negative 0.769. Maybe we'll truncate it. If you rounded, you would have to do negative 0 0.770. You have to kind of move round two decimal places. Right. Let's go ahead and try to find the other one. So the other one's off our screen a bit. Um, we're going to have to move up in order to see it. So in terms of your window, we're going to have to have a Y that's higher than 5. Maybe we'll try 10. See if that's enough. Oh, see, we're getting really close. It looks like they almost intersect right there. Maybe we'll go up a little higher to 20, just to be sure. All right, I'd say we're pretty close. All right, so intersection, we're going to do second trace, option five, hit enter. Move your cursor with your arrow keys to where you think it is, and hit enter three times. All right, so they're intersecting exactly right there, and the x coordinate is 1.732. Are we doing okay with the calculator? Okay. So there's a kind of horizontal tangent example. I'm not saying you're going to have to use your calculator all the time. Okay, I'm just saying how it can be useful, especially for this one, um, since we had two variables left over, how we could utilize that to get a graph. Okay, let's go ahead and check out the next one. Um, in terms of y, describe the values of x. Okay, it's not saying find the values. Difference in wording. It says describe the values of x for which that curve will have a vertical tangent, okay? Um, so vertical tangent, what does that mean in terms of your derivative? Derivative means slope. If the slope is vertical, it's said to be undefined, okay? So the derivative is undefined, all right? Now, if your derivative is a fraction, Okay, dy over dx, where's the zero located if it's undefined? Yeah, the dx, the bottom. All right, so the change in the x's should be zero. Okay, now this is the same curve that we had before. So we know that we have the same derivative. Okay, this time, just instead of, instead of setting the top equal to zero, we're going to set the bottom equal to zero to figure out these um, undefined derivatives, these vertical tangents. Okay, now we're not going to have to go through the same process with the calculator or anything. Okay, that's if we wanted to find the values. Now they're asking us to describe the values. So in terms of y, okay, meaning we're going to have a y left over, describe the values of x. So we're eventually going to want to get this equation to say x equals something. In terms of y means we're going to have a y left on that right hand side. So I think this one's going to be a little bit easier for us. It's not really that much solving our calculator work. We can simply subtract the 3y squared over and then divide the negative 4. So we'd have 3y squared over 4. 
there's a description. Okay, you're describing every x value to be three times the value of y squared all over four. Okay, it's some way of, of determining or, I, for lack of a better word, describing what these x values are. Okay, in terms of y, we have a y left over. If you wanted to, you could take this and plug it into the x's in the equation, right, and graph it and figure out the intersection points that would give you the y values okay but you don't have to do that okay we're just asking for it to be described the big thing with these two questions is is understanding the difference between the wording notice how horizontal tangent means you have a top that's zero versus a vertical tangent is a bottom of zero can we understand those differences between the two in terms of the wording okay thank you all right, let's try a few more of these um, practice ones. Finding the derivative, this is one that's going to get a little different, okay? Given this curve, notice how it's implicit, okay? X's and Y's mixed through. Find that. What do you think that means? What does it kind of look like? d squared y over dx squared? Can you make a guess, an educated guess? Not even close, okay? Well, that kind of looks like dy over dx, right? Just with twos in there? Yeah. What do you think the two is representing? Something to power. It could be. This represents the first derivative. That's the second. Yep. Why is it written so weirdly? Der I know. It's written weirdly. Um, what this is representing is, so the d squared is representing the second derivative of y. Okay, so the second derivative, the second changes in y. With respect, okay, um, meaning like in terms of your independent variable, with respect to x twice. That's what the other two re represents. So the second derivative of y with respect to x twice. A little weird. But that's representing the second der derivative. Just like f double prime is the second derivative using the other notation, this is representing the second derivative for implicit um, notation, that dy over dx. But in order for us to figure out the second derivative, we have to first figure out the first derivative, right? We just keep taking derivative after derivative after derivative. So let's tackle the first derivative, because we're pretty good with that, and then we're going to try to go another round, okay, try to figure out the second one. So let's work our way through. The derivative of y squared. We would need 2y dy over dx. Then we have to add the derivative of 2y, which would be 2 dy over dx. If we continue to move through the derivative of 2x, it's 2. And then we've got to add the derivative of 1, which is just 0. Okay, So here's a good first derivative. Let's clean it up like we've been doing. All of the derivatives are on one side, right? Every other term is on the right. So it's already cleaned up kind of that organized way for us. If we factor a dy over dx out, we can then divide. Can we keep simplifying? All the numbers are divisible by 2, right? So if we divide all of them by 2, we'll have 1 over y plus 1. Okay? So there's a cleaned up first derivative. 
we're going to go another round. Okay, so for our second derivative, we're now going to take the derivative of the answer we just found. So how would you want to take the derivative of 1 over y plus 1? Think about your shortcuts, yeah. Mm -hmm. We're going to have a quotient rule. Okay, we're going to go another round. So we need low times d high, the derivative of 1. We got 0 minus high, and then we need d low. What's the derivative of y? dy over dx, then we need to add the derivative of 1, which is just 0. Okay, so we're left with a dy over dx on the bottom. Low d high minus high d low, square the bottom, and away we go. All right, there's the second derivative. Okay, we did two rounds. But do you notice how the second derivative has a first derivative symbol in it, right? Do we know what the first derivative is? Yes. Didn't we just say that's right here? So what we can do is we can take this previous derivative and substitute it in. Okay, no more derivative symbol, we'll just have uh, the previous derivative written in there. So let's think about it. y plus one times zero, that's gonna go away. And then we need to subtract 1 times this previous derivative, which is just going to make it a negative value for multiplying by a negative 1. And that's all over y plus 1 squared. We have fractions galore. Can we continue to clean it up? Instead of dividing by something, what could you do? multiply by the reciprocal. So if you were to bring it up, we'd have to multiply by the reciprocal of y plus 1 squared. So it'd be 1 over y plus 1 squared. All right, so that's no longer there. We brought it up. Multiplying fractions, we go straight across the top, straight across the bottom. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. And then we have a y plus 1 times a y plus 1 squared. So that would give us a total of three quantities of those y plus 1s. There's our second derivative. Okay. So what's interesting about the second derivative for these implicit equations is that you're going to end up with a first derivative notation in there somewhere, but we can simply make that substitution so it's no longer there. Okay, um, we'll try another one of those tomorrow because the bell's going to ring in a little bit. Okay, are we hanging in there at least with the first derivative? All right, so we're going to do another second derivative tomorrow and we're going to take a look at a free response type question. Okay, we're going to get into those much more heavily as this year goes on.